Welcome back, you guys. We have got some excitement rolling and moving, and this is actually going to be a good one. So we've been doing our daily challenges, our logins, really making some good progress. We are actually up to day number nine. And as you can see, we've also made some really good progress as far as it goes when we're looking at um, what else is taking place. So I don't know why I have you up there, but we're going to do a little collecting this morning. I went in and had to do a few pulls. So I did have to pull those shards. Of course, we still have, uh, or we did previously have those, um, those buffs as far as pulling shards. So honestly, I should have pulled last night. I forgot. I did not. I did not. I did not. Came in second as far as the tournament goes at 871. So we earned a couple of rewards here. I am all about that one as well. So, all right. Global leadership boards are going to take a little bit longer and they're going to be insane as far as points as always. So everything comes down to the wire. Spider tournament is getting started. So you're only using champions from the following factions, the Orkin, Lizardmen, Skinwalkers, or Orcs. For some of us, this will be an easier challenge than for others. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure how many champions we have that fall into these groups. So um, that's another one. I appreciate them really encouraging you to have champions of all types. Honestly, that's kind of the main goal of faction wars as well. You can't make it through without going in and having champions that fall into those categories. So on my personal account, I've had to start moving around equipment and I'm really attacking one um, crypt or one area of the faction war at a time, just to kind of see how good we can do. But here's what I want to show you. And then we'll come back and do all of our regular setup moments. So champion wise, we had an amazing and epic pool. Guys, do not ju judge me over here. You know, our equipment is still, it's still low tier where we're still improving. We're getting there, but look at who we pulled miscreated monster and i will be honest with you guys i was taken with just a look of him overall it took me a second to even realize he was an epic because i wasn't paying attention to what he ran out of mouth was wide open because this guy has been regarded as a beast especially when it comes to team now here's what i learned yesterday let's look at his skills First and foremost, he has meaty fist. So attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 15% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. The stun becomes the ultimate moment. I will tell you this from experience. The further you go in, especially when it comes to arena, the further you go in with higher tiered bosses, clan bosses, dungeons, crypts, you're going to need to stun that boss because you need enough time for your team to be able to actually get in there and attack. Guys, when you're going for green potions, for example, we have seen how the turn meter feels and she can refill her health so quickly. This is one of those champions that everyone has been talking about that really comes in handy. Notice that his damage is based on his HP. So guess what we're going to buck up beyond everything? You got it. HP. And I'm going to actually go and move around some um, artifacts that we placed on him already. Um, his second attack, Lightning Storm, attacks all enemies. I get excited when I see attacks all enemies or attacks three times. He has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn, places a shield buff on all enemies for three turns, equal to 25% of the damage inflicted. Once again, damage based on HP. You want to max out his HP to the top tier and we'll be able to definitely see him in action. It's alive. It's going to be his third attack. Places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for three turns. Heals his champion by 50% of their max HP. Key is we're still going back to HP. 
Now, does he do a lot for the people who are on the team with him? The answer to that is actually no. He does shield properly, but he's able to be such a heavy hitter that often your enemy will not be allowed to get another attack in. The Ascendant skill places a 50% buff on all allies except this champion for three turns. And of course, heals his champion by 50% of their max HP, but also places a 15% continuous heal buff on this champion for three turns. So it keeps him from being too soft, too squishy in there. For his passive, he does put a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn whenever an ally is attacked while under an ally protection buff, and he has an aura. So increases HP in the arena by 33%. You will definitely see this guy in the arena. Now, you can already tell when I got him, was not really paying attention. I'm thinking this is all about attack. Um, no, this is not all about attack. We have got to get some HP flowing on my guy here. So let's do a little comparison, which sadly the comparison is so sad. But the other thing I definitely would like to do, and I'm not sure if I have anything else that will kind of fall into the category with HP. I know my personal account, um, because you've been going so much longer, you're going to have a lot more um, just, just options overall. I thought about Fury, which is one of the areas I definitely thought about. Um... He's not a damage dealer. I'm not really worried about counterattacks. The bonus heal is kind of, eh. I need two for immortal. So, and I need two for divine light. Now this may be tempting. So here's what I'm going to do. Because I can go in and do a little replacement, I'm going to replace the shield. And I'm also going to replace the sword. So see, we have enough in us to do an upgrade. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to make it to that point. We are extremely low on silver. Remember I told you guys that silver becomes really, really important as you move through the game. And remember, if you find yourself, you know, just running out before you're getting things equipped in place where you want them to be, um, it's a good way to kind of step back and see what you can get rid of, what you can't get rid of, because they're going to charge us as well to equip. So even though we're changing these over, I'm going to go ahead and actually see if we can add a little upgrade to this one as well. We're going to actually have to go in and collect some silver and attempt to make these swaps. So as you're equipping, read their skill levels, carefully because this swap especially because of you're moving four and five star artifacts guys 20,000 50,000 is going to be a lot so he's not going to be really doing what I want him to do but uh, amazing now keep in mind over the last couple of days during this event we already had our previous five champions and we were excited when we got um Rotting Mage. Thought we were doing pretty good. Have ascended him four stars. He's up to level 35. Also had the privilege of pulling this guy. So he's um, already ascended four stars up to level 17. Miradon has come in handy. It is the amount of umph, honestly, that he's throwing out there that's been huge. Here's another guy that was pulled recently. Griner was the other one that we pulled that we've been putting a little work in. Three stars, got him up to level 10 so far. I've seen him on a few arena teams. And in the beginning game, I'm kind of liking what he does for the team. Stats are kind of even. I definitely want to speed him up a little bit. But we know there's a lot of work for us to do in campaign, for example, to get our level and quality of artifacts going. Gear Grinder is another one. I have heard a lot of people that really will keep this guy, oh, love the design, based on what he's able to do. So, and we can look at his skill set as well. So, I'm noticing the last few pulls have been 
wonderful for us. Gears of Gore is his first attack. He attacks one enemy, places a 7.5% continuous heal buff on this particular champion if the attack is critical. But his damage is based, again, on his HP. And we're kind of keeping an eye on what is most important. Second attack, Healing Splatter, heals all allies by 15% of their max. So he does have a little healing ability in there. We can unlock this one as we ascend. So Necrocox revives a dead ally with 50% HP and a 50% turn meter. Remember we were saying to ourselves, it would be really nice to have um, some revivers on the team. And it's almost like they were listening to us and they've definitely delivered in that area as well. His aura is going to increase ally HP and faction crypts by 25%. This guy can turn around and become a very, very solid champion. Now, I'm tempted to equip him, um, equip our top 10 that we have so far. We're going to go back, look at Griner. Same thing with him. We went over his attacks. Damage is based on his attack power. So as I am getting artifacts, I'm going through campaign and start acquiring those higher level artifacts. I want to keep in mind what will work best for each of our champions. Shock is another one that's going to attack all enemies. A lot of books, a lot of books. Um, has a 20% chance of removing one random buff from the target, again, based on attack. Unbury revives an ally. He's a reviver. And these are the ones that I like to put on my arena teams, especially when I'm starting to hit teams that are at or above my level just a little bit. Being able to bring your champion back for one or two moves has been a lifesaver for me more than once. He will place a shield buff on the revived champion for two turns equal to 20% of their max HP. I like this. It's great to have a champion that can revive their teammate. It's even better when they're bringing them back with 50, 60, 90% of their health. But what I love even better is not only do you bring them back, you shield them to give them an opportunity to at least get one of those attacks off. I've had so many moments in battle where, and you have to excuse my neighbor is cutting the yard this morning. I've had so many um, moments where, you're in a battle, you need one more hit, and that champion that was just revived is still knocked out. I love how they really thought this one out, laid it out. The attention to detail is pretty awesome as well. And then, of course, he has an aura, so increases ally resist and faction crypts by 30. This can be a huge one, especially when you're thinking about things like um, poisons in a couple of areas. That I can think of off top because that has been one of my struggle moments. The other one that we pulled that we did get excited about, remember, was the Executioner. He's in that Knight's Revenant. We don't have a lot of champions that fall into these particular categories, so it's nice to actually see these guys. He has Shield Bash, attacks one enemy, has a 15% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn, and he is attack base. Tumult is going to attack all enemies, decreases the turn meter by 20%. I'm loving this for those boss battles. This first thing it kind of brings to mind. Has a 50% chance of placing a 15% decrease speed debuff for two turns. This is based on attack and defense. So this is what you're using to figure out where do I want to place my equipment? What's going to be best for my particular champion? A couple of books there that are going to be needed. Um, we have, is it Shiltron? We'll go with it. Places a 30% increase defense buff and a counterattack buff on this champion for three turns. This is one of those little selfish moments. You can't ascend it and it will go to a 60% chance instead. And then, of course, he comes with an aura, increased ally defense, and all battles by 17%. So we have been lucky enough through pulling, and I know I told you guys, oh, let's try not to pull, and I couldn't. I just could not. So both Executioner, we don't have any artifacts on currently. Um, Gear Grinder is another one with no artifacts. So we kind of stopped with these two guys here. But our top 10 is actually looking pretty solid. Now, I'm going to do what we always do because, oh, guys, 558, and I'm so tempted over here. We're going to probably wait for an event to hit this one. Let's go to quest. 
We did a little bit. So we can definitely hit arena today. We won't be summoning champions, but I'm pretty sure we will use 50 units of energy. Um, just because we're going to check out and grab our shard. I know, but that shard will normally come in handy. And you end up getting it right back because we spent 5,000. And guess what? It's a free shard. So don't forget, always go in and claim your rewards, especially if you do it at the beginning, which is really nice because you kind of know where you are and what you guys are working on. Oh, we are claiming, we receive energy from working through with our clan, which is always nice. Don't forget you do have the clan shop. So we have 150 of these. They have skin fragments and XP brew or a chicken, which we cannot afford. Now we can come in here with the XP brew. I don't know about fragments yet. I've learned that you can really go in with the fragments. I don't even have this champion, to be honest. Dark Fallen Arbiter skin, which is kind of cool. But I don't have that champion, so I'm going to leave that where it is. We can get 100,000 silver. I think that would be worth it. And should we go for that one? going to go for it twice okay why not so it's going to use up all of our little coins there uh always so tempting but we don't need it going to our guardian ring i did drop him in just so he can get a little boost as we go along the way we're going to do our little collection here and as you can see as long as you're remaining active it does afford you the opportunity to kind of collect and keep yourself going um, this is going to be a dungeon divers event. So this is the one for the tundra skin fragments. You're going in with particular, um, champions in order to compete and participate in that one. I always collect these in ready mint for the forge. We've got a 25,000 there. We're going to do the XP boost. We still have plenty of energy left. So if nothing else, we can definitely run through, campaign which is what i'm thinking we're gonna have to do build up or continue to build up our champions come to clan boss because we did have a really good day the other day as far as clan boss went oh and we did good i actually have not moved up this far so ten thousand, not bad not bad not bad so if you're ever wondering since we're already here let's go ahead and run our nice little arena because we are all in the game here. Our powers are 26,000. So at this point, we should do pretty good with the majority of your teams. Remember for arena, if you are not at least running those five battles, make sure you are doing that one so that you can just collect that reward. It's a pretty easy one to pull off. Now, because we have pulled so many champions to help support our team at this point, um, it'll definitely be a good time for us to slow down and take a look at what champions we have available, what their skills are, how they can work with different teams, what areas of the game they will probably or likely excel in. And another thing to think about, you may not on a regular basis look at the reviews, but I definitely want to do a video where we are diving in to some of the reviews with the champions that we work with the most. So remember with Deliana, Warpriest, Elhane, and Riding Mage, we're trying to max those champions out, which is probably going to encourage us not to pull in anybody else. But one of the reasons why Warpriest was removed from my other team, specifically, um, Sniper kind of falls to the same category, is as you move up and start acquiring those other champions, the skill ability begins to overlap. And so you go in and honestly get to the point you're just selecting whoever is the best at the skill that they're supposed to do. I've always liked War Priest. I think she's a good one at taking a good hit. I know that she can deliver a pretty good hit. So when she's pumping out six, seven, eight, nine thousand um, units of damage per hit. Um, in certain campaign areas, it can be extremely helpful. So if you aren't ready to kind of sever that relationship and sacrifice her, I would definitely say she is good enough to be placed on a tag team for the beginning game. 
I've used her there for quite some time. I just maybe a week ago, and this is after 45 or so, or so days in the game, I just let both her and Sniper go. Now, there are a couple of champions I've actually had to sacrifice more than once. And I'll be honest, there are some champions that I love that you can easily get in campaign if you're going through and you're going to spend a ton of time in campaign. So don't underestimate the amount of time that you're going to be spending there. But um, Diabolus is one that um, War Maiden is another one that I know a lot of people talk about, but I've literally had to sacrifice them at least two times before because I needed them to power up another champion. And the champion that I was powering up was either Epic or someone that was a lot more rare to pull than a campaign farmable champion. So think about where the champion is coming from, how hard it would likely be for you to get that champion again. When they give us multi-battles, for example, if I know I'm going for a War Maiden, a Marquise, um, a Diabolus is another one, for example, I will go to the areas where they're most likely to drop and I will run 20 battles, 30 battles. Number one, I need the XP anyway. I can definitely benefit from the silver. But number two, eventually you are going to pull that champion. Um, for my other account, for example, last night, Gaelic, I just pulled him. And so I was really excited to see him come out because now for that particular account, I actually have all champions of a different um, kind of faction or group. So that's another nice one. A lot of people, which we've said before, kind of gravitate toward like high elves, dark elves. You know, you fall in love with your group. Either you like all the knights or all the magic wizards or what have you. So this is just kind of one of those moments. Now you will notice when we start throwing out abilities and you're trying to keep up with what's going on, don't forget about this info button so you can see who's making progress, what's been placed on them and what is actually being placed on everyone else. Because that's the other thing, you kind of forget, you know, really quickly what your champions are able to do and what the cha champions on the opposite team can likely come together and get done. So I think we have probably rocked our five, if I had to guess. So let's go back. We're going to, of course, acquire that little quest reward. 2,500 units of energy is going to be the priceless. We're always here for the XP because that's always nice to have. Because at this point, we're up to level 29. And we can get this forge open at level 30. So we're making progress. Last but not least, let's dive into our great haul. Just kind of give you guys an update. So HP, I put a little bit over here. We've managed to get in with defense. I was thinking about Deliana. I'm definitely in the first portion of the mine. I will go to just honestly down this entire row for defense first. And then we'll come back to accuracy as well. As you're working through and just kind of taking a look at these, look at what you'll need. Even when you want to upgrade, it will allow you to kind of do the split over. So I know for me that the defense is going to be the name of the game at all time. I also know when it comes to HP, for a lot of my um, people that we have now, you want to have that one maxed out just because of the champions that we have or their performance. Their power on the team is also dictated by that as well. It will give you a nice conversion rate so you can kind of see, you know, where you are, what you need in order to build your great haul. But do not, guys, by any means, do not skip the power of the great haul. Remember that this is that area that impacts everyone on your team across the board. I'm going to run a couple of more battles through campaign, keep my champions moving forward. I will definitely update you guys if we have any good pulls. But hey, if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, be sure to go ahead and do that for me. If you have any great pulls, share it. I would love to see what you guys are working on, what you've been successful with down in the comments. Um, share the information, hit the subscribe button, and guess what? We will see you soon. Don't forget, I post Monday through Friday. Most videos are going to post 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. I am Wicked Raider 22. Come along on the journey, share your journey, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.